Hey there guys, it's DJ Slope here from Slope's Game Room and it's been a little while since I've done one of these Q&A vloggy type videos. Uh, don't worry, there is a complete history coming tomorrow. Uh, but yes, uh, it's been a bit of a shame because I've done quite a bit since the last Q&A. I went to EGX with lots of cool people and got to meet a couple of my favourite indie developers. I went over to Play Expo in Blackpool and did my first ever live quiz, which is where this happened. Whoa. Me and the family went to Legoland, we went to two weddings, work on the Cinema Arcade Studio got underway, Kim Justice, Octavius and myself all went over to Comic Con to go and speak live about YouTube uh, things. Because I hate Alton Towers, a good friend got my name put on a brick outside the theme park. I did this. Went and saw a man about a cave, went back to Disneyland, saw Jimmy Carr live, finally got my neon sign for the eventual backdrop of my studio delivered. I released 32 videos since the last Q&A, and now I'm on my way to Norway for Retro Spill Messen. And here I am, on the plane, getting myself into that vloggy Q&A headspace, and it wouldn't be complete without some nice crappy music. So after getting to the airport, after a good two hour journey to the train, I met up with Retro Ravi from the Retro Hour podcast and beers got drunk. Shortly after we got on our plane to Norway, and yep, that's David Doak, or Dr. Doak as he's more well known from his GoldenEye fame. And yes, that does mean a GoldenEye complete history is now finally going to happen. <laughs> and yes, for those of you that don't know, I don't like heights. I hate them in fact. Apologies to the lady that sat next to me, your knee was very comforting. Actually, this is probably a good time to tell you guys about a previous life I had on a television show called The Human Guinea Pigs, where we all had to face our fears in every single episode, and yep, that's me, the guy with the big hair on top of an aeroplane. It cured my uh, fear of heights for a good, I don't know, year maybe? Um, but then after not being on an aeroplane for a couple of years, when I finally went on there again, it all came flooding back. Anyway, we landed, we saw a poster of our names on it, Ravi saw a fountain, which, you know, he liked, we had breakfast, and the show began. Honestly, never going to a mostly retro gaming convention outside of the UK, I've got to say, it was quite eye-opening. The convention itself was a fair bit smaller than what I'm used to in the UK. However, the spirit and good vibes from all of the awesome, enthusiastic retro gamer people just came shining through. Everybody there was so, so incredibly welcoming. It's very embarrassing being British out there because everybody from about the age of, I don't know, six or seven could speak fully Norwegian and English. I think it was on my second day when I first met someone that was actually speaking in their native tongue. Um, so yeah, I mean, everyone there was incredibly welcoming. I got to meet so many cool people and uh, yeah, massive thumbs up to everybody that came and saw me. There were some great stalls and what have you. I got to meet David Wise of Donkey Kong fame and he even gave me a banana to eat. Actually, he ended up giving me quite a few bananas, but you know, whatever. Anyway, the convention was great, the talks were great, I met so many incredible people including Aisha Gaming and even went for drinks with her and her crew after. And although this convention wasn't as home computer heavy as the events I'm used to, what they did have on display was seriously awesome. Anyway, whilst all this footage does show up on the screen, I'm going to answer a couple of questions from my Patreon. Todd Paul Float G asks, trying to get new challenges out of classic games, I've been playing randomizers for Zelda 3 and Super Metroid. My latest rabbit hole is the Zelda 3 slash Super Metroid combo randomizer. What are your thoughts on randomizers and have you ever played any of the games thrown into a blender like this? Um. Nope, I have literally never even heard of randomizers, but you have definitely caught my interest. Uh, Super Metroid is one of my all-time favourite games. Obviously, Super uh, Mario 3 is obviously fantastic too. And I want to go and try that stuff out. I love a great, 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 great um, uh, Metroidvania type game. I'm currently working my way through Bloodstain, but as soon as that's done, maybe I'll be trying to check that out. So, you know, thank you for the tip, but I've got nothing to add to this. Sorry. 
Okay, one more question before I carry on by Ryan Gore. And what was your first experience in completing a video game all the way from start to finish? And are you inclined as much anymore to complete them? Now, as a kid, I remember looking through my classic Mega Drive collection of games and I definitely uh, had more games that I hadn't completed uh, than ones that I had. I mean, there was ones that I completed via cheats, but not from, you know, start to finish. I don't think I completed um, Earthworm Jim until I played it emulation wise and, you know, then I went back and played it on the original Mega Drive and I can do that. Um, uh, I mean, obviously I completed the Sonic 2, I completed Sonic 3. I don't remember completing, ever completing Sonic 1 from beginning to end. Um, on, on an original cartridge I have now on that Switch version that come out and oh, amazing, amazing Sega Ages release there. But the very first one game I ever complete, and I remember it vividly, I remember exactly where I was living at the time, um, uh, how hot it was outside, all that sort of stuff. It was a hot day, uh, which is why I was in playing video games. But it was Fast Food Dizzy, which is one of the spin-off Dizzy games. Um, one of the, it's a sort of like a maze game, similar, I suppose, to... Not Pac-Man, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just a good classic maze game and uh, it's quite easy and it was the first game I ever completed. I would have been about six, I think, maybe seven at a push. Um, yeah, I was about I was about six or seven when I completed that first ever game. But yeah, I mean, I complete games more now. But with that said, it, before I became a YouTuber, that was when I was completing the most amount of games. Um, for instance, now Crash Team Racing. I'm absolutely adoring Crash Team Racing. Oh, I've got something to show you, by the way. Add this in here. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really enjoying Crash Team Racing because it's such a good, hard um, uh, kart racer. And with that said, I'm enjoying picking it up and playing it for a couple of hours here and there when I find time, but I'm not going to have time to complete that game. Absolutely not. Uh, it's just the way it is. It's the way it is. But uh, yeah, I mean, I try and complete games when I can, but not to 100% completion. It's too much. Too much. Anyway, back to the convention. I want to give a massive, massive shout out to Yan and Elk Job. I um, really hope I'm saying that correctly, but Elk Job are one of the biggest uh, manufacturers, uh, biggest distributors, sorry, of uh, electronic equipment out in Norway. And those guys are a big help in getting me over to this convention. So thank you so, so much. Um, it, it blows my mind that there are people in Norway that know my name. It's absolutely insane but you are like i said everyone there was so welcoming and yan all of the retro spill mess and crew um and obviously uh, people uh, the other stalls that I, I i spoke to um i can't remember the name of the guys um over at the back who i bought the super nintendo games i'll show you what i picked up at the end uh, but yeah guys uh, Thank you all so, so much. Uh, I really, really do appreciate it. And actually, <laughs> uh, Elk Jop, uh, again, I hope I'm saying it right, they actually gave me this. Ooh, don't worry, don't worry. He, the guy who gave it to me knew it was bad, but uh, it's brand new, completely brand new. Um, and uh, yeah, I actually got it for a comparison video. I thought it'd be interesting to talk about this compared to the actual Mega Drive Mini that we're getting, considering, right there. <laughs> Sonic and Knuckles. I mean, I'm seeing Mortal Kombat as well. Hate it all you want, but there are some amazing games on here that are not in the other one. Arrow Flash? Ooh, there are some good games. I haven't actually probably looked at this. In fact, it is completely new in box still. Completely new in box. Um, so yeah, there'll be a comparison video for this and the, um, you know, a bit more of a funny video. Obviously, the Mega Drive Mini is going to win, but it'll be interesting just to look at how incredible that is compared to what we've been getting up to this point. So yeah, Elk Job, thank you very much for sending this over to, and um, for giving me this at the convention. And uh, thank you very much for helping me uh, get to the convention uh, and Yan and everyone else as well. Excellent. And I'm hoping to come back next year. Anyway, it was after the awesome convention, which I do suggest you can go to if you can, when I decided to go wandering around Norway and answer a few more questions. Hey there guys. DJ Slope here from Slope's Game Room. I've got to remember to look there, not there. <laughs> so I am in Norway and uh, yeah, basically I'm just walking around this absolutely enormous and beautiful uh, lake pier. I don't know, it's got loads of like um, cruise ships, I believe, like just in and out, in and out. One of them looked like it had a Commodore logo on it, but it's actually just got this color logo. And I decided I'd just walk around it because it looks really cool. But then I got to the end and uh, I think that side looks a lot nicer. And this side, it, it's just office blocks and I've just got to the end. So now I'm doing the dangerous and jumping off, <laughs> uh, I don't know, like the edge of the pier. Is it the pier? 
and uh, yeah, just climbing up random rocks, which is where I am now. Let's uh, turn this around. You see that? Oh, I'm going to have to put the camera down. That way, Daniel, learn how to use your gimbal. Yeah, look, I'm just sitting here on this massive pier. Let's go around that way. And I don't really know where I'm going to go from here because my trainers ain't really got any tread. But behind me, there's a little path over there. So I might see where that takes me. God, this is the last you hear of me. <laughs> what video do I end it on? That kick scammer video I just released. So yeah, I thought I'd answer a question. Um, so the first question is this. All this love for NES Classic, SNES, PlayStation, Commodore 64, etc. And now with a real Genesis Mini. But what about Amstrad? What games would you want to see on an Amstrad CPC Mini? Amstrad games on an Amstrad Mini. Something like that would need to have like a hundred games on it. Something like crazy like that. Um, oh, it's been so long since I played on an Amstrad, man. But uh, the Bounder games, Thing on a Spring games. Uh, I want to see all of the um, uh, Jack the Nipper games, Chase HQ. I mean, it would be an awesome system. And uh, yeah, I'm actually at this Norway convention, as I said. And uh, there, there's no Amstrad or anything like that here at all. And that's why I think things like that are probably the most important, you know? Um, to, 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 to be able to, to, to show off these systems. That's why I'm excited about the Turbo Graphics, you know, because I don't know the Turbo Graphics that well. I know of the most popular games, but there's definitely going to be a lot on there I don't know about. What other ones could we have? Um, I always remember playing Basil the Great Mouse Detective, uh, Renegade. Ah, oh, I, I, I recently rediscovered Renegade, actually, uh, playing on emulator, sadly. But um, that's what you would be doing if you got an Amstrad Mini. Uh, what else? What else? Ugh. I don't know, it's been so, so long. Uh, oh my god, the Roland games? There needs to be a load of Amstoff games, oh mummy, uh, as much as I hate it, like Bridget or something like that, um, because that was the first game I ever played. <laughs> Shit as it is, I would like to see that. There's loads, there's loads, I'm just trying to remember them all. Um, Ghostbusters 2, I remember I had a lot of fun with that, the original Ghostbusters as well. Oh, there's, there's so many, there's so many. Outrun, because I never got it to load on my, uh, my Outrun. Yeah, when you do this this vlogging stuff, you always feel a bit like, oh, I don't know, there's people around. You, you know, you say you go to a nice secluded place like this to answer questions, but you never expect that thing to suddenly start going past you. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. I don't even know if there's anyone on it. I can't see anybody on there. I can't see anyone on there. Anyway, this probably isn't that interesting for you guys. Let's go see what's over there in that wooded area, <gasps> and I'll answer some more questions. Hi DJ Slope, hope things are going well with you and your family. What are your thoughts on the rumour that the PS5 and next Xbox will be the last as streaming gaming will be the future? Thank you. Right, I'm going to try and do this and I'm going to do it while walking. I was going to stop but there's bugs that are everywhere. <laughs> it just keeps going up this mountain. Um, yes, the family and I are doing fine. Thank you very much for asking. That's very awesome of you. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't think the PlayStation 5 and Xbox one, two, or whatever you want to call it. The next Xbox are going to be the last generation. They say this, they've been saying this since like the PS3 era. I'm even sure there was rumblings back then. Um, it's not going to be the last because the difference is Nintendo or even, you know, possibly other systems. Who, know how that, who knows how that Amico is going to turn out? Um, I doubt it's going to be a big player, but still, oh shit. <laughs> um, the reason why is because there's too much of an emphasis on. Uh, the, the old school way of doing things. You know, you look, I'm, I'm doing this because there's this bug that keeps coming in front of me. Um, the thing is, like, people still like collecting physical media. And even though, like, the big players may do this whole streaming thing, I still think there will be a place for physical media and physical consoles. And I think that as soon as PlayStation 5 and Xbox 2, whatever you want to call it, moves away from that, they're losing a big chunk. Um, uh, regardless of how good the system is, if, if, there's, if there's another Switch that comes out and it does incredibly well, people, uh, uh, developers are going to make games for that first and then move them over to the other systems. So even though they might be slightly better on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox 2, again, um, on the, uh, 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 they're still going to be pretty much the same on whatever the next Nintendo console is and whatever the new system will be from another company like that. So I just think that it's not going to go away. Not yet. That Google Stadia stuff has just done so, so badly. I was so excited for the idea of Stadia, and then it came out like, what a load of rubbish that was. I mean, they didn't even show off one killer app. Not one killer app. Um, and people moaned when the N64 came out with just Super Mario 64 and Pilot Wings. I think there wasn't much else, but like, 
come on, come on. Google Stadia ain't got nothing. They've just got a load of indie games that will definitely make their way onto the Nintendo Switch, and they're probably already on Steam, you know. So. No, I don't think um, we are, are going to be seeing the end of streaming just yet. Just yet. I mean, it's, a, it's an inevitable future, um, but there will always be. I mean, vinyls come back. Why? Why is vinyl come back? Because people like me like to collect it. So, you know, there will always people will always want to get physical stuff. Um, we're not a streaming uh, nation just yet. So, anyway, I'll show you some more con footage while I try and work out how I'm going to get down there. These Patreon questions might be the last video I ever do <laughs> edited from the hospital bed. Here we go. Okay, guys, so I just got down that massive cliff, and I think I'm on like private property or something. This is like turning into like an Ali Law channel. I don't know where to go now. I think I've got to climb back up all the rocks, which is going to be really hard because I have to jump down quite steep. Because I don't know where I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm genuinely trapped. Uh, what should we do? Let's, let's answer another question. I was wondering if you've had time to play any new releases recently, and if so, what ones? I know you mentioned on Discord about picking up Cuphead on Switch. As always, massive shout out to you, um, Creamy Elephant. Yes. So new releases, and um, they're not necessarily new releases as such, but maybe things like, uh, let me have a think, um, stuff like Luminez. I played a bit of Luminez, uh, which is pretty cool. I think that's the guy that owns the house. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Luminez on the Switch. I've got some beautiful uh, big box of that. I'll show you some pictures up on the screen of that now, or more on my Instagram, actually. Go and support me on Instagram. I'm trying to get to 10K, and I'm very far away from that. Uh, so yeah, um, uh, Luminez, I've been playing a little bit of that. I've been playing RXN, uh, which is quite a cool shmup. Um, I've recently got back into Dimension Drive, not necessarily new, again. Um, that, was, uh, that was in my most popular ever kick scammer video, by the way. The, um, the, the horrible Kickstarters that ended... Uh, badly or whatever it was I called it the the one with the submarine Ooh. so yeah um, there's that uh, and I've, oh my god yes I've been playing a new game Sonic uh, Team Sonic Racing yeah, great game too really really good game uh, so yeah that's a very good game uh, they're the only ones I've been playing thank you very much Creamy Elephant <laughs> and yes that was my trip Huge shout out to Dr. Wiley and Commonwealth Realm, who I hung out with a little bit and actually ended up doing a panel with them too. But honestly, that was it. The Norway version of the quiz featuring people like Ashins, Kim Justice, Retro Man Cave, Larry and Nostalgia Nerd went down an absolute treat. But before I show you off the 20 song mashup that I did for that quiz, I got one more question to answer from my patrons. Let's answer this lengthy one right here from Retro to Next Gen. And he asks, Hello my friend, it's been a spell, but it's amazing to see you're doing so well. So firstly, I'd like to congratulate you on all your success. It's been fantastic to watch your channel grow and change. This leads to my question. After having time to reflect on your career, is there anything you would have done differently knowing what you know now? Also, now that you're global, do you plan to visit us in the US finally? Right, okay, there is actually more to the question, which I'll get to in a minute, but he's uh, asking several questions here. So firstly, yes, I desperately want to get over to America and come along to the um, uh, one of the big American conventions. I speak to so many American YouTubers via social media uh, and DMs and what have you. I've got a great relationship, I think, with everyone. I haven't gained any enemies over there or anything like that. And um, this, is, this is my thing. Over in the UK, we tend to do a lot of Q&As and things like that. And I'm not saying that that's boring, not in the slightest, but you know, I mean, being someone that's on that stage talking about YouTube Q and A's and you know, what was your first game and all that sort of stuff. It's all very, 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 I've done it. I've done it a lot now. And that's why I've started doing the, the uh, Slopes Game Room quizzes. I want to show people that there is a lot more to offer uh, when you come to these conventions and see these YouTubers that you like. And I would love, I mean, already that has got me over to Norway. I would love to get over to America, uh, maybe to MAGFest. I do the old video DJing, maybe do a bit of video DJing at MAGFest. Anyone over in America that wants to help me get over there, ah, oh, I will put on a fantastic show for you. I would love to come over there. The majority of my audience is American. Um, uh, I've, I've been obsessed with sort of like the American pop culture uh, growing up, obviously. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, I would love to. Um, I think it's going to happen within the next couple of years. And yes, to you, sir, 
we'll definitely have a beer. Not one of these awesome Slopes game room beers, sadly. Um, I'll try and bring a few over if I do. Oh no, I can't, they're running out of, um, I think they're out of date next month. July, that's this month. I've got to drink all of them. I've got about a crate of this to drink. Um, yes, I'll have a beer of all my American crew. I, I would love to get over there. Absolutely, I would love it. Oh yes, he asked another question, didn't he? He said, um, would I do anything differently? And I mean, I can always look back and say, you know, I wish I started doing YouTube sooner because, you know, those two or three years before I went full time was really hard, you know, of being a dad. And if I started sooner, I wouldn't have had kids to worry about and I could have focused more on the YouTube side of things and stuff like that. But at the same time, I I am the type of YouTuber I am because I got to that point in my life. I'm not, I, I don't believe in everything happened for a reason, but uh, if I started sooner, I would probably have a very different channel than what I have now. It, it's just the way it goes, you know. I'll, I'll still do gaming stuff, but I feel the way I've developed, um, you know, public speaking is, uh, my public speaking is pretty good because I've done that in previous jobs. You know, marketing's done well because my previous job was a marketing manager and stuff like that. So I, I know how to promote myself. I know how to publicly talk. I know how to edit and all that sort of stuff because of what I've done before that. So as much as it is really exciting to, you know, think, oh, if I did everything sooner, I would be a lot bigger now. And, you know, I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't have had to do that struggle of having a uh, family and YouTube at the same time for those last two or three years. It would be completely different and for all I know I could be a lot smaller and I wouldn't have been able to grow to this level. So I'm very happy with the way it went and no, I wouldn't change anything. No. <laughs> I'll tell you what I would change, nothing to do with that, but I sold so many of my games. <laughs> that was a bit gutting. Um, uh, my entire Saturn collection, GameCube collection, Mega Drive collection, Master System collection, uh, minus the odd couple of games. I've, yeah. Sad. It's sad. There you go. I'd, I'd change that, but that's not really to do with YouTube. Uh, what else did he write? What else did he write? He also says, is interacting with people something that always comes naturally to you, to you, or did you develop this skill over time? You have great interactions with your followers, and I find that rare and completely refreshing. I'm sure we all thank you for that. Have fun out there. Looking forward to your new Slopes Game show. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate when people notice that sort of thing. Um... I will say, I'm going to, you know, yes, I, I reply to everybody. Obviously, I don't. It, it's just that the way it is, as you get bigger, tens, if not thousands of more people try and talk to you and you only have enough time to be able to reply to some people. Um, but yeah, I mean, the way I see it with YouTube is, yes, it's a job and all that sort of thing. But if you put me in a room, before take YouTube out of the picture. If you put me in a room with someone that likes talking about retro games, Streets of Rage, whatever it may be, classic Sega, weird gaming facts, that sort of thing. Me and that, me and that imaginary person can just talk until the cows come home. I remember when um, I, I finally met the Did You Know Gaming guys. <laughs> I took a friend along with me. That, you know, he's into gaming, but not to the obscure facts that you know me and someone like Did You Know Gaming know. And it was just a. Uh, it was just sort of a, a, a fact off. Who knew this fact? Yeah, but did you know? Yeah, but did you know? Yeah, but did you know? And th that sort of stuff just really, really excites me. So when I meet people that um, like talking about that sort of stuff to me, um, it, it, I don't realise that this is a job anymore. I just love to do it. You know what I mean? I, I love to talk to people about these obscure gaming facts and, you know, get, get people come to me and talk to me about stuff. And obviously... You know, I love to present it in the best way possible, hopefully so it stands the test of time and people will be able to watch that stupid fact about, you know, Nintendo's um, uh, quack shot game that was in bowling alleys and all that sort of stuff until the end of time. You know, I, I find that sort of stuff very interesting. So yes, I find it naturally because these are the sort of people that are very welcoming and, uh, you know, we've got similar interests. It's as simple as that. So yes, they are my questions for this Q&A. The next one will not take as long. And like I say, don't worry, this isn't the usual content on my channel. There is a new uh, Complete History going live tomorrow and hopefully another uh, five examples of video coming this weekend, which I've got a great, great idea for that one. So um, yes, if you would like to see uh, tomorrow's video already, you can become a patron if you want to ask me questions uh, to answer uh, live on these videos. And yes, please do become a patron or consider becoming a patron at least um thank you all so so much for supporting me i am now going to play a segment that i made for the norway quiz which is this little bit where i mash together loads and loads of music and uh, i'm gonna do it with the ashens intro as well actually <laughs> you guys just basically need to guess as many as possible in this little clip there are 20 songs see how many you can guess and write them down below 
Anyway, guys, thank you all so, so much for supporting me and um, listening to me waffle on about random gaming knowledge. It, what a oh, what a dream come true. So thank you so, so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy the video tomorrow and the one at the weekend. Uh, and until next time, this is DJ Slope signing out and hopefully I will see you all next time. Hello, I'm a recording of Internet Human Ashens, and welcome to round three of Slope's Game Show. It's the wacky music round. I, I don't know what this is. I just wanted like a prop to hold, and this was on the shelf. So yeah. Anyway, so the rules are, DJ Slope has created a mashup of loads of different gaming tunes and sound effects. Your task is to identify as many of them as possible. And remember, if he's got any of the answers wrong, it's your fault. I, I don't know how that works, he just asked me to say that. Anyway, back to you, real life human DJ Slope. Yeah, don't answer me, Daniel, I'm not really there, mate. Daniel is weird. That's the best sound I've ever done. There's a question from his wife. Press start, please. When will he move the suitcases and the boxes in front of her wardrobe? When I've got time to finish this video. Can you press stop, please? Okay, that's a promise. We all heard that recorded. <laughs>